Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Monday, December 23rd, 2024. Let's go ahead and take a look what we're tracking here for today as I'm going to give you an update on your Christmas forecast. We do have a little snow out there. I'll show you where we're expecting some snow to fall on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit of unsettled weather week on top of that for later this week with multiple systems. Could see a few thunderstorms in parts of the country and there is a slight marginal risk for severe weather there. We should give you an update on that. And then we'll talk a little bit about the January forecast, which to me is starting to show indications it's going to be a pretty active one, not only with the cold air, but potential for some winter storms. And we'll kind of explain what's happening that's going to be causing that as well in greater detail during this report. Now, if you're new to the channel, you've already subscribed, I want to say thank you for doing so. And if you're that 60% out there or so that have not yet subscribed, the only way I can grow this channel is with, that, with your help. So please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up down below. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our satellite imagery here on your Monday. Pretty quiet up and down the eastern seaboard, but it is plenty cold, especially for areas there in the northeast. Some bone chilling cold up there. A little bit of snow coming across the Great Lakes. Uh, a little bit of rain and some mountain snows out here in the west. Getting a bit of a break right now from uh, Seattle down into Northern California, but we got another storm system that'll be moving in for tonight. So get a bit of a break today, but more rain, more mountain snows coming in as we go into tonight. Now, looking at our current watches and warnings, we have winter weather advisories here in the purple, kind of scattered all across the country, northeast, mid-Atlantic, also here across the Great Lakes and across the west. Also, fog as well. You know December is the foggiest month uh, for the country, and you can see why. I've seen that here this morning. A little bit of wind out here as well across areas of the West Coast there to areas here in Tan. Now, looking at the surface point map, look at these temperatures up here. Minus 5, 0. Minus 5 is plenty cold up here across the Northeast all the way down into the Southeast. Got temperatures well into the 20s down here into North Georgia in my, uh, my neighborhood. Definitely mild here in the middle of the country. 55 in Dallas this morning, pretty mild there. Uh, a little bit of wintery mix around Minneapolis there. So some of that pink is right in there and uh, seeing some of the rains and higher elevation snows out in the west as well for this morning. Let's go ahead and focus in on some of this snow that's falling across a uh, portion of Michigan there. And snow doesn't show up all that great on radar, but you can see some of the heavier bands here uh, kind of moving across this area. And this system is going to be dropping down and kind of give it a chance for some snow going into areas of the Northeast as we go into Christmas Day. Now we're going to be watching some energy that's going to be coming out of the, uh, the, the west there. That's going to maybe set up a few thunderstorms here probably later today uh, across parts of Texas kind of going into tonight. So we're going to look at your day one outlook here as you see a little pocket there across Oklahoma and Texas. Also, uh, this will be coming in later tonight as well here on the west coast as that next system approaches there with a few rumbles of thunder possible there as well. Now, what has caught my attention is for uh, the day two outlook. I had mentioned this last week that uh, the couple of these systems look like we might see the potential for some severe weather. And right now, it's just a marginal risk. So we're talking about, again, areas there in East Texas there showing that green with a marginal risk. And we're also getting some here along the West Coast as well, uh, sitting up there with some uh, isolated thunderstorms in there. Now, with that marginal risk for tomorrow, as we break that down categorically, not worried about the tornado risk. It's less than 2% but you could see some spotty areas of hail in there, as well as some high gusty winds, generally in that same pocket, uh, kind of loading up in there across East Texas. So uh, that'll be the concern for your Christmas Eve going into Christmas morning there, they're going into East Texas. And as far as the day three, day three is not looking too bad. This is going into Christmas day, just a couple of pockets with some thunderstorms right along the Gulf Coast there across Louisiana and Texas. Here's this next batch of energy coming in. That'll be obviously watched going into Thursday and Friday. And then we'll get some more again right along the west coast there with that next storm system coming in there on the west coast as well. So again, we do have some thunderstorms to watch for this upcoming week and uh, pockets of severe weather obviously tomorrow, but I think even another chance a little bit later in the week. Now, as far as the excessive rainfall forecast, this is your day one outlook here uh, for today, predominantly out here on the west coast. That is our main concern out there uh, for California and maybe parts of Oregon. This will be coming in for tonight and going into tomorrow morning. They do the same thing. It's a 24 hour thing from seven o'clock morning to seven o'clock next day. This is gonna be predominantly here for tonight and as we wait for that next system to come on in. Going to our day two outlook, then we'll start shifting down here into the, uh, the middle of the country again for the few of these thunderstorms, maybe some heavy rains and some gully washers there. A little bit of pocket here across the interior sections of California there for your day two. And as far as your day three is concerned, let's go out to day three. Looks like predominantly just out into the Pacific Northwest here 
uh, uh, for your day three, again, from Washington State, uh, going down from Oregon uh, and into Washington State. So that's what we're looking at for your day three, heading in toward your Christmas day. Now, let's go and take a look at your hazardous outlook. Really, that has not really changed all that much. It's continuing to basically show heavy rains, mountain snows, gusty winds. That's continue going to batter parts of the Northwest and in Northern California. Uh, that trend will continue here for the next seven days. So let's focus in on that short-term forecast. We're going to be looking at that high-resolution model here as we're going to be watching the system across the Great Lakes. It's going to be dropping into the Northeast. we got the system in the Intermountain region. We're also going to be watching some stuff down here as well into Texas. So let's go ahead and watch this here very slowly as we push this on through uh, going into throughout the day on your Monday and you notice the uh, snow is going into uh, after midnight. So it looks like after midnight tonight seeing the snows increasing across portions of the northeast uh, looking pretty good. Here's that big vigorous storm system out here on the west coast. Notice we get a little bit of that thunder showing up here uh, going into Christmas Eve as well. Uh, going into your Tuesday there and that snow will continue throughout the morning hours and then it kind of uh, pulls on out. So a little bit of morning snow across the northeast for Christmas Eve and then we'll watch this system down here into the uh, areas of Arkansas and into Texas again. Maybe a rumble of thunder here. This system begins to move inland out here on the west coast there and uh, we'll continue this all the way out to the end going into midnight uh, going into Christmas Day. So as you notice we're going in, into midnight here Got some thunderstorms down here that has to be watched. Some marginal risk of severe weather into that zone. And seeing some snows here going into uh, midnight Christmas Eve and Christmas Day across portions of Idaho and into Utah and into Nevada. So those are areas there for snow. A little bit into the northeast, a little bit on the mount and out in the mountain west as we go into uh, Christmas Eve and into Christmas Day. Let's talk about the jet stream. This thing's going to be a little interesting here. So... What we're going to watch here is we've got a, a fairly active system here uh, driving in. we got that one system here across the south. We're watching this one, and we're going to watch this one back behind it. Uh, that's going to be setting off the, the rain and thunderstorm threat here as far as the short term is concerned. So that's what we're looking at right there. Let me get that turned off there. Thank you. All right, so this goes on by, it swings on into the northeast. Here comes that next little impulse coming into the 27th. Uh, this will be going into the middle of the country. Here's that disturbance. And then we're going to see the jet stream begin to change as we head toward the first. Okay, uh, so we're going to get the we're going to get a cooler shot that's going to come down here as we head in toward the first. We see it here, come boom, coming down. One thing I'm noticing here as we're heading toward the first, I'm not seeing any jet stream up here. There's, there's something that's happening. Uh, I'm going to show you the warming here in a second. There's a lot of warming not only going on the surface up into. Uh, Canada going into the 28th, 29th, and 30th, it's going all the way up to the stratosphere, which means there's no jet stream that's going to be holding the polar vortex in place uh, going into January. That's why I'm a little concerned about what's going to go on in January here. So we, as we go in toward the second, we got this pretty good dip in the jet stream here uh, coming on down. There's nothing up here to hold any of the cold air in place. So the polar jets, the polar vortex is showing indications it may drop down into southern Canada here as we go into January. Now, this big trough here needs to be watched very closely. This is going in toward the fourth. Yesterday, it was showing this configuration uh, was showing moisture going into the southeast. Now, the current configuration is kind of burying it in the Gulf and then ejecting it out. So, uh, the, the, how that jet stream sets up is significant because it, depending on how that trough sets up, we could be looking at a, a potential major winter storm going to the 4th, or we see a system that's going to eject out into the Atlantic. It's too early to call at this point, but with the cold air in place, something I'm going to watch very closely as we head toward January 4th here. But as I take this all the way down to the end, the one thing I want you to notice here, this is the polar vortex, my friend, breaking, breaking loose here. And we got this jet stream that's going like this. So this thing looks like it may drop down into, into the United States or into the northern tier uh, going into January and uh, kind of show waves of cold air at us. And we'll see how that uh, may develop and cause potential winter storms to develop here throughout the month. We'll have to watch it closely, but uh, an interesting pattern starting to take shape. Something you don't normally see with a stratospheric warming taking place in January. That's something you know, typically you see heading toward March, you know, getting toward the spring months. All right, so let's look at the current uh, forecast here short term. Okay, we already talked about the snow ejecting out of the northeast going into Christmas Eve. And we got a little snow there going into Christmas Day across the Intermountain region. So going into Christmas Day, you can see a little snow out here. We're going to watch for some thunderstorms down here in the south as we go into Christmas Day. And then as we go through the week, it looks like we'll see that rain coming into the southeast. Not really mounting to much there on the 26th. We're going to wait for that next energy system. Uh, to go into Friday again, a few of those, a few thunderstorms, not out of the question in here, but not too bad. Here's some more mountain snows here on the 27th as well. 
Look how far that the rain is all the way up into Minnesota uh, as the freezing line has gone way up here to the north. Okay, remember, we've been talking about the warming taking place here Christmas week all week, but it's going to be short lived. All right, so this is going to move on out. We'll see another little system coming in here on the 29th, uh, bringing the rain across the areas of the Midwest and into the southeast. Continuing with this active pattern out here in the west as we go toward the 29th. And then we'll see how things evolve with that changing pattern coming back at us as we go toward the first. So we got a storm coming in out of the west coast, going to dump some snows here across the mountains and coming out in the plains going into the 30th. And it'll be that system there that'll kind of start diving down. You see it diving down there with the rains here uh, coming down here to the south. So we're starting to see that uh, the cold air start to filter in here as we head toward New Year's Day. So we're going to see that coming on down and uh, this will cut it into the northeast so by the time we hit to midnight it looks like for the northeast obviously welcoming in the new year oh now start show maybe we get maybe maybe get a little rain in there for uh new york uh for the dropping of the ball there but notice the cold air is coming on down here once again across a big part of the country heading in toward the first and then we'll see what happens as we head toward the fourth what it's showing right now in the european yesterday it was showing this moisture that was coming up out of the gulf so right now heading toward the fourth it's burying this energy coming out of the Rockies and into the Gulf of Mexico. Let me back this up once again. I want to highlight this one more time. Here's that energy right there. It's this energy here coming out of the Rockies. It's taking into the Gulf of Mexico and basically ejecting it out like this, okay? Only because that's the way the jet stream is currently configured. So it goes out to the Gulf of Mexico. The 540 line's way far south here. So with this moisture being that close, uh, areas of the southeast got to watch. So it's a question of what does that system do at that point? Does this thing eject out or do we get some sort of nor'easter going up the eastern seaboard? It is too early to call. This is still uh, 10, 11 days out. So, but it's something I'm going to watch there. That could be a potential big snowstorm there. Notice this thing's being ejected on out to sea. And then we're seeing a lot of snow starting to pick up out here in the west as we show its indications here of the, of the polar vortex starting to drop down here a little bit. Uh, heading toward the northern tier of the United States as we go toward January 6th. So it looks like January may turn pretty active here, and we're going to be watching that very closely. Again, watching that thunderstorm threat. we got a little bit of thunderstorms here. Again, short term, 24th, 25th. There's that thunderstorms there uh, here across Arkansas and across Louisiana there. Uh, that's kind of the main area there. I don't really think that's going to be too much of a problem out there in the Intermountain region there. But that's just the one series. Then we got another one coming on out again. Some thunderstorms here across Tennessee, maybe getting into Alabama, going into the 27th, and uh, that'll kind of linger in the 28th. So you see, it's a pretty decent chance for some rumbles of thunder here uh, across the southeast, going into the 28th. Marginal risk for severe weather, possibly. Okay, we'll see how that works out. But generally, seeing a thunderstorm threat there. But one thing I do notice with the K index, which is what measures our thunderstorm chances here. Once the pattern changes here going long term, we got this one little disturbance going there on the first. Uh, it kind of goes away because <laughs> the, the country turns very much colder there and the thunderstorm risk goes away. So thunderstorm chances uh, will be there for this week. And then beyond the first, I think uh, we'll see things begin to settle on down here. Let's look at the precipitation chances here. As again, we're going out for the short term here. Uh, dealing here for the next 72 hours. I kind of stopped right there. We'll see for the next three days. We got some pretty good rains out here on the West Coast. A little bit of rain, obviously, with some of those thunderstorms there across portions of Texas and Arkansas. Some of this will be in the form of snow here across portions of the Northeast, obviously, uh, with that system moving on through there. And then we'll go ahead and take this out to 240. Well, again, we'll take this out to 240. I usually go out 10 days on the precipitation. So we got some pretty decent coverage here across the eastern uh, uh, half of the United States. Very heavy rains and high mountain snows out there in the, in the mountain west. When you see that purple showing up there, you know you're getting some heavy rains out on the west coast. Still stay dry out here in the southwest here. A uh, dry trend continues here as we go into the month of January. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, snow totals here. Again, going into Christmas Eve. Here's Christmas Eve, okay? Uh, notice we get a little bit of uh, snows here across the northeast into Christmas Eve. We got a little bit out here in the mountains areas as well going into Christmas Eve. Let's go into Christmas Day. Take this forward here. It looks like New England, you're about, you're done with it. And we get little snows out there in the West going into Christmas Day. So Christmas Day, for you snow lovers, get a little snow out there across the higher mountains of Utah, Nevada, Idaho, areas out there for Christmas Day. So those are the two, Christmas, those are your Christmas, white Christmas, snowy days for those days. Not a lot, wish it was something better, but that's all we got for right now. Let's go ahead and take us out to the 10 day here. We'll take us all the way out to 240 here. And again, you start seeing indications of some of that cold air coming on down there. As we're seeing some of the snow kind of erupt out here, coming into the plains into Nebraska as we head toward the first. Uh, 
definitely the higher mountain snows, boy, they're, they're going to be measuring in feet once again out there from the Cascades into Northern California. And we get another shot of some more snow here across portions of the Northeast as well as we look out for the next 10 days. Temperature wise, okay, this is what we're going to be looking at. Okay, we're, again, we're saying goodbye to this cold air mass in place here. I want to explain this closely as well. All right, so as we go on out by, we go into this upcoming week, the main thing that's going to be concerning, obviously a lot of the country is going to see above normal temperatures this week, but what really is concerning is just how warm it's getting up here into Canada. Not only is it warming at the surface, it's warming all the way up to the stratosphere. And when it does that, that weakens the polar jet stream energy and that polar vortex can start getting very wobbly moving around. Again, we traditionally see that a lot, especially as we head toward spring. It, uh, it'll do that. You'll see that quite a bit, not so much in January. So look what happens here as we go toward the first. We start uh, tapping some of this cold air coming out of Siberia and out of Alaska. And it's really going to beat this back big time here as we go in toward the first. So watch what happens here. We start trapping some of that cold air, drives it down into the United States going into the, the going into the first, second, and third. And still kind of warm here across portions of eastern Canada, but we're definitely uh, bringing in the cold air across the west there as we watch that vortex that's supposed to drop on down in there. And it really looking at a seasonally cold weather returning to a big portion of Canada. And this will probably work its way down into the United States as we go into deeper into the month of January. We've got a brief warm up between systems here as we got one cold air exiting out. We got a brief warm up in the middle as we head toward the seventh. So looks like a, an unsettled weather pattern going into January. That's got to be watched very, very closely for the potential for winter storms. You know, we're going to have the cold air. That's definitely trending there. It's a question of, of where the storm systems and the jet stream sets up. That's going to be the big question from a forecast perspective. So uh, as you saw there, again, Climate Outlook Center, again, taking us out to the, fir to the first, we're looking uh, pretty mild here from coast to coast, okay? No big changes here. What they have changed here a little bit going out to the fifth is temperatures near normal, above normal here. I think this map will get modified a little bit more here for later today with a little more uh, blue showing up on this map here as we get deeper into the month. From a precipitation standpoint, fairly active except for areas there in the southwest. That was showing up very clearly here on the 6 to 10 day where it was staying dry down here, but active here across the northwest into the interior sections and across the Great Lakes, obviously, here in the 6 to 10 day outlook. And 8 to 14, staying drier out of here in the west. Uh, pretty active here to the north and maybe getting a little drier here into the southeast as well as we look out from December 30th through January 5th. So, again, looks like we're in store for... Um, a pretty decent travel day for today. Obviously, a lot of folks in the airports and heading on out. That's not looking bad. Uh, a little bit of weather across the across the south with a few thunderstorms there in Texas. That need to be watched uh, closely going into tomorrow. And then we got to see what happens with that cold air. Again, uh, some of the global parameters coming together here with that cold air uh, uh, kind of breaking loose and the polar vortex can really do some very funky things. Uh, with the overall weather pattern here across the country. And that's what's got me concerned for January. Not saying we're gonna to to see all these big blizzards and storms like that, but uh, you, give me a, you give me a, give me some serious cold air, you drop pull the vortex down to a low, lower latitude like that, and it really opens up the uh, Pandora's box for potential uh, winter storms there in different forms across the country. So I'm gonna be watching that very closely here as we go into January. Now, if you'd like to get these reports on a regular basis, in your youtube feed what are you waiting for my friend hit that subscribe button come on board here and as always if you got a comment any feedback please leave it down below give me a thumbs up i do appreciate you guys support here on the channel that's your morning update you guys take it easy if you can stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow i got one more for you for christmas eve take it easy bye guys